Yeah, we're out here on Turkey Creek on the northwestern plains of Oklahoma today. It's a chilly day. It's cloudy. It's uh, probably in the upper 40s and the north winds are blowing, but we thought we'd do a little shooting. So today, we're going to step out of our usual 1823 time period, and we're going to jump forward about 20 years to 1843. People have the misconception that uh, the mountain man's choice of guns was the half-stock Hawken, like this one here. But actually, during the heyday of the mountain man period, back in the 1820s and 30s, those old boys were carrying full-stock flintlocks for the most part. Uh, you might have seen a half-stock percussion sporting rifle made in England come out to rendezvous with Sir William Drummond Stewart. A couple of years he came out with Bill Sublett. Uh, you might even have seen Bill Sublett himself carrying a nice percussion rifle. But for the most part, the mountain men, the beaver trappers, were carrying flintlock guns. So where did this gun come in? Well, the Hawken brothers, Jake and Sam, started building guns for the mountain trade back in about 1826 or so, but they were building those full stock flint guns that uh, were made to carry out there in the mountains for years at a time, killing buffalo and bear and elk. Uh, but they progressed as time went on and the percussion cap became more accepted. Uh, they progressed to making percussion guns pretty much like this one, but that was probably in the latter 1830s when they started producing these guns. Now this gun is a typical gun based on what the Hawken brothers built back in the 30s, or rather in the 40s and 50s and 60s. It's a half stock configuration with a heavy barrel, uh, it's got a percussion lock, and it's got uh, two barrel wedges that hold the barrel in, and you pull those wedges out and the barrel with a hooked breech can be taken out of the stock uh, to, to uh, ease the cleaning process and maintenance and such. So it was more of a progressive gun and it was a widely popular gun with uh, the plainsmen and uh, the old mountaineers that had turned into guides for guiding the the uh, settlers to Oregon and California over the Oregon Trail. So we're probably looking at somewhere in the 1840s for a gun like this, and that's what we're going to shoot today. This particular gun is a 53 caliber, so we'll be shooting a 520 patched round ball. And as I said, this one is not a flint lock. It is a cap lock gun, and it uses percussion caps, which I have in a little leather cap holder right here and uh, uh, it's got double set trigger uh, as I said it's got a heavy one inch diameter barrel and it's 53 caliber so it's a pretty heavy gun but it was made to be heavy for traveling those uh, western trails the Oregon Trail and the Santa Fe Trail and uh, going out where uh, you couldn't just take your gun down to the gunsmith if you had a problem. You needed a gun that would stand up to heavy use and uh, maybe fall off of a horse. You'd be carrying this gun over your saddle bow as you're riding down the trail. And me, as a, as a former beaver trapper, I'm now guiding a wagon train up the Oregon Trail, and I'm out ahead of the train looking for water and uh, buffler for meat. So I've got my trusty hawking. So uh, let's load her up and see how she shoots. You'll notice this has a shorter barrel than the usual guns I shoot. Uh, those uh, flintlock full stock uh, rifles and smooth bores. Uh, this one is about a 32 inch barrel. And I'm going to load up 80 grains of powder today. As usual, I tap the breech in to settle that powder. And being as how I'm now a progressive mountain man, uh, 20 years down the trail from when I first went up the river with 
William Ashley in 1823. I'm shooting pre-cut, pre-lubed patches. So I take my patch that's lubed with beef tallow and my ball and I put them right there and I take my short starter give it a whack, start it down the bore and my ramrod to run it on down. I've got it seated good on my powder charge so I have no space and I'm ready to cap it. So I'm going to take my caps and I'm ready to shoot. A little faster than loading the flint locks. Uh, as I said, this is uh, truly a progression from the old flint locks and this gun held sway in the West until uh, about the middle of the 1860s when the guns, the cartridge guns or repeaters developed during the Civil War took over. Uh, those guns quickly became popular, the Henrys and the Spencers, uh, they became popular with the Plainsmen and this gun sort of faded into obscurity as far as general everyday use goes out there. So let's take a shot and see what happens. Well, there you go, boys. That bear done got me because I didn't pull my hammer all the way back to full cock. So let's set this trigger and try it one more time. Good shot. I nailed that bear. Let's show let's load her up one more time and see if I can do that right. All right, now last time I forgot to pull the hammer all the way back to full cock before I shot. The real mistake a fella could make if he was out there under pressure would be to forget to put the powder down before he ran the ball down. Now that's known as a dry ball, and then you're really up the creek. So let's pull her back to full cock and take another shot. I think I missed him that time, boys. Let's take one more shot.
and that time was a good hit. Well, that's how we did it back in 1843 on the Oregon Trail guiding settlers to Oregon.